Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on mysterious and weird true stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Case file number 630, written by Video Comprehensive 99. A disappearing object phenomena, but now with an entire mansion. This is my mom's story. We live in a very small town and starting to develop a little bit. We live along one of the main roads in town. The other main road crosses it, and everything is scattered around the different quadrants, like a graph if you will. Instead of traveling down our road, turning right and down the other main road to get to the grocery store, there is this little connector road and new businesses are slowly popping up. A few banks have been built, a feeder supply store, and some type of restaurant looks like it's being built. Street lamps have not been installed yet because of the low traffic and there's probably two stop signs along this approximately 1.5 to 2 mile stretch of road. One night, my mom was going to the grocery store and stopped at the stop sign to turn towards the existing shopping center. She does the whole look both ways before turning even though there's no reason to be expecting traffic from the right. They're on an empty plot of land where there is no current construction going on. She sees this huge mansion-like house. It had a wraparound porch, beautiful dark brick, all the exterior lights were on. She's floored because it looks like the inhabitants have moved in. When did they even start construction? She gets gas and groceries from this area frequently and has never seen anything happen on this lot. She goes about her business and goes home the same way. She swears she still sees the house. The next day when the sun is out, she goes down the same road, this time to go to her bank, and boom. There's no house. There's no mansion. She looks for it every time she's in that area. Case file number 631, written by Intuitive Authority, The Lost Key. A couple weeks ago, I had gotten the energy to clean up a pile of recyclables in my living room. The space by my front door was open and clear after doing that, nothing on the floor. I finished working and then went to pick up my kids and pick up dinner. We got back home and I sat on the floor by the front door and my oldest daughter was standing less than a foot from me while my youngest daughter was about three feet from me on the opposite side. I made some comments and then suddenly, my oldest daughter just fell over out of nowhere. There had been a loud metallic sound when she hit the carpet. She's clumsy and trips over nothing all the time, but this time she hadn't even been moving at all and fell over like she'd been pushed. We had all been laughing because we know her to be extremely clumsy. I asked if she was alright and she was laughing, but shaking her head no and pointing to her knee. I reached over to rub her knee and saw the previously lost bedroom key I had been thinking about earlier in the week right below it. I instantly realized the metallic noise when she fell had been the key. We had only been in the house about 3 minutes before this happened and she hadn't seen the key before. She didn't know what it was when I showed her. It doesn't look like a regular key. I found the whole thing strange. I went to make sure it wasn't the key I already had, it wasn't, and I put it back where I usually keep it, way down the hallway. I had lost it weeks ago when I dropped it, but it wasn't on the floor. Has this happened to anyone else? Is this key symbolic? Bonus file, written by Bo Delta, my Yemeni friend in the afterlife. Twice in my life I've used the Ouija board. The first time I did it, it didn't seem to work that well. The board was a bit dodgy and there was one person in the group who I was certain was moving the glass for theatrics. I couldn't prove it but I had my doubts. The answers to the questions were sketchy at best and not all of them made sense. The one thing that maybe might have proved it was real was that I remember for weeks after we did it, our cat at the time would just sit outside the doorway and stare, right in the direction of where we had set it up. We all noted that it was kinda weird as he'd never done that before. But he eventually stopped and we forgot about it and moved on. Perhaps we did make a connection and our setup was just wrong, or our etiquette was off. Either way, I remain largely unconvinced that we had contacted actual spirits. The second time though, was an entirely different outcome. A few years later, I moved across the country to attend university. One day, me and some of my university friends got on the topic of Ouija boards and decided we'd have a crack at it one night, but this time we'd do it properly. One of my friends was quite an esoteric sort of guy and he did some research on how to properly do it. 
None of the others besides me had tried Ouija at this point, so we were mostly going in blind, but my friend made us a proper board setup and even used a sage smudging stick to cleanse the room of bad energies, as he put it. Once that was done, the four of us sat down and got to it. I will mention here that I was still very skeptical, so I went in with the mindset of carefully observing the other guys to see if they were messing with the glass at all, but throughout the entire session the movement was so fluid and precise that all my doubts quickly evaporated and I was genuinely astounded that there was a supernatural entity interacting with us through this entire session. But that wasn't the only reason I started believing. The conversation we had with the spirit was so clear and yet so bizarre that I'll remember it forever. One thing my esoteric friend said that was paramount to the experience was courtesy. So we started off basically asking if there were any spirits available to speak to us, and we got a yes. We introduced ourselves and asked if it wouldn't mind speaking to us for a bit. Another yes. We apologized for intruding and made it clear that the spirit did not have to answer any questions it didn't want to and then we began our questioning in earnest. I won't type out a transcript, but here's the basics. The spirit we were speaking to was a soldier, killed in 1984, and he was from Yemen. He quite enjoyed the afterlife, or whatever he was at the time. He made it very clear to us that death was not the end, and there was nothing for us to fear in the afterlife. He said the concept of heaven and hell were untrue. He also said reincarnation was possible, I then remember asking if it was a Buddhist style of reincarnation, to which he received a yes and no. I interpreted that as a sort of. After all this, we then decided amongst ourselves to wrap things up, having already had our minds blown away by what we just experienced. We said thanks to the spirit and wished it all the best. We also waited for the spirit to say goodbye to us. This was an important part according to my friend, as it would allow the spirit to return to its own realm easily. I walked out of that room with a strange feeling of bewilderment and yet also enormous relief. If what the spirit said was true, and I had no reason to believe it was lying to us intentionally, then death was almost something to look forward to. I considered myself a pure atheist up until this point, but this one night rattled that belief so hard that I no longer consider myself as such, and will always have the memory of my Yemeni friend to prove otherwise. Case Notes, Bonus File Yeah, this was rather touching for a story revolving around death and communicating with the dead. It does make you wonder. I mean, I have so many theories going on in my mind now. I still think quantum immortality is the most likely event when you die, but it doesn't mean it's mutually incompatible with spirits lingering. So what we would consider a spirit traditionally is our soul departing from our body and I think that's related to us seeing ourselves as our dead state or soon to be dead, so body separation. And then after that if our body dies, the spirit doesn't perish, it inhabits the body, but it isn't of the body, if that makes sense. And then if you bring in quantum immortality to that, well how I think spirits are manifested is as your body dies, a part of you, a part of your spirit is imparted into another version of you, a real life you, that's corporeal, in another universe, and they merge together. But I think a part of that spirit is still left behind, maybe a copy is made or maybe just a part of it is split off, and that fragment, or echo as I like to call it, stays behind, and that's what we call a ghost. And then you also bring in Buddhist reincarnation. Well I like to think of it this way, before we existed, we didn't exist, we were in that great nothingness. And yet, from that great nothingness, we then popped into existence. So it only makes sense, it stands in perfect reason that if we did die and there was no quantum immortality or anything like that, then we'd return to this great nothingness where we don't exist. But if we spawned from nothingness initially, then we could do it again later on. I guess there's no guarantee that we wouldn't spawn as a frog or something or maybe an alien in a distant world. I don't know how it works exactly. But I'm quite convinced that death is indeed not the end. Although I confess that my hope is this is all a simulation and there's a real world matrix style without the evil machines part of course uh, that we can awake to. And this is all like a, a very high end MMORPG, super hardcore. And we can just decide scenarios to come back into and just play out different uh, roles. 
Like now, how we'd want to play a video game to experience different things, being a warrior uh, in high fantasy, or living a life uh, just trying to build a house. Whatever it is we want that we haven't experienced yet, we can come back and experience it. Maybe that's why people choose a hard life they haven't experienced that yet and need that perspective. I don't know, but it's a nice idea. It really is.